So here's the deal. As of today, we have 23 days left of December until it's end of the year. Our goal this year is to finish all, you know, the body work roughly, so it looks like a truck, minus tailgate, of course, because that's a whole other stick. But that leaves bed, that leaves running boards, back of the cab, reboot the front end a little bit. There's a lot of stuff to do. So let me bring you guys in. We're gonna start working on the bed floor on this, even though we got a whole bunch of other projects on this truck right now, but we gotta get some big pieces rolled in. So. Welcome to Ohio Stable Garage. One sheet of 16 gauge there, a sheet of 16 gauge there, which I'll get into in a second, and a sheet of 18 gauge. Four by eight satin coats, or at least uh, the 18 gauge used to be a four by eight, kind of pillaged off of it, you know. But I'm hoping that that should be enough steel to do the rest of this truck, including the doors, all that stuff. But let's dive right into this bed floor because we can do simple. We can just slap a sheet in there and tack it in and it'll be all hunky-dory from there, but we don't really want to go too simple. Let me bring you guys in. I'll show you guys what I mean. Went through the Liberty and put a four by eight sheet in here just so that you guys can get a visual. As you can see, four by eight sheet doesn't stretch on both sides. It needs to be a little bit longer. We're gonna have a gap, 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 gap. Now, I know what you're saying. Cut the sheet, do your length, do your length, do your length. Here's the problem. When you're working on a budget build, and you can tell it's a budget build because we got pieces of bedside and stuff like that in that corner right there and all over it, steel was steel when we started. And steel is still steel and steel is friggin' expensive. Two 16 gauge four by eight satin coat sheets, pretty near 400 bucks. So we need <laughs> the second sheet to do our running boards and those are long. So we need the length side on this sheet to a degree to do top and bottom running board. So we kind of have to, you know, piece in the little gaps on that. Not ideal, but it is so what it is. That roughly leaves us with four feet there. And you know, it's gonna be kind of like six feet or whatever the bed turns out to be. But we're gonna add a little bit of, I don't know what you would call it, bends, I guess, into that. Because otherwise, if I just welded from there to there, made a panel, made a panel, made a panel over our arch, you're likely gonna be going down the road and you'll hear the floppy floppy all the way in. You kind of like, you know, like a, almost like a drum, like a snare drum. So we're gonna add a little bit of rigidity in through there and all what the top floor is gonna be just basically hot tacked on top of it, not a big deal. So when we bend it up, it is gonna squish this guy in a little bit. This is kind of how it is. But what I'm thinking, is we're gonna go, I don't know, two inch strip, bend, two inch strip, bend, kind of go like that, 45 degrees, and it will give us four or five nice creases all the way down this. Then we'll weld from here to there, there to there, make two panels, and then we just gotta make our arch piece, kind of make it off that. That's kind of what I got going on, at least in my head, on how we're gonna do it. But in order to do that, we can't do this sheet here. It's too big to bend manually down the center. So off to the shop we go. Right. Let's bring so it. let's reverse that a little bit. We're gonna use our two good sheets, but I don't really wanna use them for just a bed floor. That's gonna get dinged up and stuff like that. Here's the high ho stable garage. See, kinda Man. keeping with the theme there on how we did this truck. Again, this is just a piece of bedside from when we did the long bed to short bed conversion on that truck, welded in there. Well, it got me thinking. We recently did a trailer at work. We had to replace a whole bunch of cross ribs in it. I'm talking a lot of cross ribs. Well, this is one of them. As you can see, it's rotten there at the bottom. Don't mind that. But if I put them right down the center, that's kind of what we got. And I know what you're saying, Colt, that's not, <laughs> that's not gonna make a bed. Well, what if I told you if I had 20 of these little guys here? What would you say then? 
You know what I mean? Make a big panel, put them in, cut them, do exactly what we were going to do with that, except we might even be able to butt up against the wall. Let me get a whole bunch of them over here, put them all in, and we're kind of see just what we could do. Okay, so Give me a second. Here we go, fellas, the big reveal. I stacked up all these guys here, just, you know, placeholders for now, because obviously that's not where it's going to go. But I just want to show you the con. I have three of these that I can use for the cab when we do the cab repair on it underneath. So take that in mind. But here you go. That's what them all stacked up. Obviously, we will be doing butt weld down the center. And that's basically the trade-off. We're going to save money because it's a 175 plus tax for one sheet, a 16 gauge. Or I can use these guys free and use up welding wire, which basically going rate is 75 bucks for the five pound spool. So I think I'm going to go with the welding wire. Save, I don't know, half a hundred bucks. But basically my idea is we'll get a center line, go down it, weld one in center, and then basically just build off of it. What we'll have to do though is cut them right at our channels. That's the only kind of hiccup there, but it's not a big deal. I'm not worried about it at all. So I'm going to take all these guys off, find my exact center between my steels, and then we're going to go from there. So give me a second. Let me pile all these up in the corner and then we're going to go. Oh, side note. The only other thing that kind of sucks about these is because they were all riveted on from factory, you flip it over. Some of the rivets are, you know, still poking through. So I had to go in and manually grind or pop those out. And then we'll also have these little holes all throughout our bed. But, you know, that adds drainage. We got drainage on the bed, factory drainage. So let's get at it. All right, so well. this is what I came up with. I moved that guy out of the way. I took my middle on my cross rails, scribed a line, scribed a line. Then I measured my main rail here. It's five inch. Two and a half off, two and a half off both sides. What I'm going to do is put this guy in like so. Basically line it up with both lines, front and back, front and back. And then this side is going to be butted right up against that flat. And there we go. It comes out to 75 inch and we're going to basically go from that end of the cross rail there. Then I'm hoping it's going to be the same measurement there. I'm just going to have to see. But if so, I can make one that kind of goes around the whole thing, make sure it's all square, pay a lot of attention on my first one. And then the other, oops, you can kind of do it like roofing, branch off, and it should all retain square. That's the plan. We're going to try it out. I'm going to weld up the first section, kind of get it all up. When it's in, I'll come back to you guys, tell you how she went, and then... We'll start converting that into a bed floor. Oh, and by the way, take the aluminum rivets, what's left of them, just a, a cheap Robertson, you could use a punch, and a hammer, go out the side, they come right out. So, that's the plan. Let's All try right, it. So, out. here's the front section right here. Take a look at that bad boy. Not too shabby, eh? Not too shabby at all. I didn't care if we're just a hair over on this side because... When we make that back plate, we're going to cap that off anyway. It's not a big deal. Here, we got a little shorty, but that's okay because I think I'm just going to run a line all the way through. And where those land, that's where that curve is going to start, you know? So, basically, this front section is going to be the exact same. Find my center line, do that, put my center, and then build off of it. A lot like roofing. Again, nothing really too drastic on it. So... What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the front section off camera, but I'm gonna bring you guys in full time for the corners, the overlip, all of that, cause that's gonna be some complex stuff there. So let me bang out that front one and then we should be all good. Oh, by the way, as for welding wise, I still have to come in and add a tack or basically a couple tacks all the way in through or a little strip. Cause I'm not gonna seam weld this, it makes no point. But what we will do is every so often we'll add basically an inch long strip 
on each thing, make it one piece, but there's no point. Look at all the holes. Again, it's gonna breathe very well, but that's okay. We're never gonna put a tonneau cover on this anyway, and if I do, we'll address that down the road. So let me start working on the front section. I'll come back when the front and this one's all All square. right, so I don't know what percentage that would be. I don't know, 50%, something like that. We got the easy ones done off camera, fellas. Got the front done. And we got the back done here. Basically what you guys missed out on, same exact thing. Nothing fancy, nothing special. The only thing that we changed is, come on, focus now. There we go. We seam welded it to the backboard. That's about the only change. What we're bringing you guys in for now is the fun stuff. That would be the corner bits that we're going to have to notch, all that stuff. Especially this hump here. As for this hump right here... What I'm kind of thinking is one crossbar because realistically, it's never gonna have a lot of weight right here in the center. If anything, we're gonna have basically storage right here. And on this side, this is the side that's the beefiest side. It would have the most welding. We might even finish weld the entire floor and weld it to the beams just for the fact that if I ever need to put anything heavy in here, like an engine, anything like that, it's gonna be on this cross section. The front cross section might just be like a toolbox, you know, smaller stuff, stuff that you can kind of stuff that you can kind of move over this hump without any big issue. So as for the cross rail, I'm thinking one singular cross rail growing across. And then I made a whole bunch of these here. Let me get two. these little guys. We're going to drill a hole right in the center. And that's where my bolt's going to go. And basically the premise is. Let's see, how do I math? Yeah, something like that. It'll go like that, and then on the other side, I'll cross it. So one will be like this, the other will be like that. And then on frame side, same thing. I'll weld one to the frame, same thing on the other side, weld one to the frame. Drill them, then I can bolt that guy down. Then I can build my arch, but I have to have this guy bolted down first. Side note, we were smart on this one and I stopped one extra so I could cut my welds here and break the bed off once this is kind of solidified onto this. I wasn't too smart on this one. <laughs> Even though there's only one cross rail that's actually on the frame, the other one is just kind of, you know, out in free space, not a big deal. But this cross rail here, it is tacked under this. I wasn't really thinking about that. So I'm gonna have to break those off off camera, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna weld these suckers on just like so, bingo bango, drill them, put a bolt through. Once that's nice and tight, I can continue on with the floor. So I'm just gonna quickly weld these on off camera because I'm pretty much just gonna show you guys the floor. These are really, really simple stuff, guys. You don't wanna see that. So let me put those on real quick. I'll be right back with the floor. We got the bed cross rail all bolted down. I ended up doing the captive nut on the top. I welded the nut to it. So that way we can basically just put an impact or something on the bottom and zing them out. We're basically, they're small bolts, yes, but again, this is not a super serviceable bed. And we're also gonna have, I believe it's eight, eight total, yeah. We're gonna have eight mounting points for this little tiny bed. It's gonna be fine with these little guys. But now we have a surface that we can mount our pieces to. So what I'm gonna do now is cut pieces, basically, so they'll span maybe just a little bit past this guy right here on both sides. Then that right there, we can do the angles after. So let me measure that up. And then we're gonna start welding down, making sure they're all squared up. Bingo bang.
we got about, I would say, 70% of the bed done. Let me show you guys. So we went ahead, banged away the top portion of this. It's the exact same idea as that and that. The only difference is I found my square center. Then I had to basically match it off of these guys. That's why I have this guy lined up. He has exact center plus the width of the beam, lined it up, and then I used my laser, wherever he is. Yeah, I used my laser right here, and I shined that down, basically to that one, and it cut right through the middle. So, everything's all lined up now, and I brought them all out. So that's all said and done. So now what we have to focus on is basically from here to there, all these inlet ones, I want to do the curve down on both sides. Won't be the exact same on either side, because that one's a little shorter than here. But we still have to cut this. Well, so it might actually end up being the same. It's hard to say. But either way, I'm going to try my first hand on the first one. Set that guy up. I think, basically, if we do a 45 on one, like that, it should go down. But... Let me eyeball it. I'll cut up a piece and I'll bring you guys in for the first one. So it one. took a little bit of time, but I think I found a solution. Let me bring you guys in. my test it. piece. I opted for it because, you know, ease of use. I can work on it just like this. What I ended up doing is two 45s. 45 here inverted, 45 here inverted from that one. Two separate 45s, but same plane, 45, right? Then, where is it? Right here. The guy was camouflaged like that. Right here, I got the marking on it. It's nine and five eighths long, simple straight cut. Now, I know what you guys are gonna say because you can likely already figure out what's going on. Why didn't you do the 45s there onto this? And I'll tell you that right now, nice and easy. I couldn't figure it out. For some reason, my brain wasn't working on it. I have one piece, two piece, three piece, all test pieces. I couldn't get it to work. Cause here's my other 45 one right here. As you can see, these were originally straight cut. What ended up working for me is 45 and these guys and doing the straight cut on my one piece. Kind of makes it interesting with the angle grinder getting in here, but it is what it is. So basically this piece now will come in just like so. And the fitment's pretty good. All we have to do We'll do a butt weld on this, and then here we got to do a little bit of weld, and then maybe a little bit of hammer action, or just, just cut it off, weld it up, that overlip, but it's not bad at all. And that's one out of, I think it's total of 22 that we need for all the pieces that are currently on it. So a little bit of work, but that's what I got going on. I'm pretty sure that's what I'm going to go with, but let's start welding them in. I got a lot to cut. And then I gotta modify this bed. So let's get at it. I don't know if you can tell by looking at me. I'm not a mathematician. Geometry, you know, isn't the strong suit. But as you can see, we got the curve going and it follows the line. So. Let me show Here's you. a little look from the back. As you can see, the lines pretty well follow through. It's taken a long time, these, and let me explain. So if you look, I'm seam welding all of these because, again, this is only one cross right here. Zing, just like that. This right here has to hold everything. So basically, it needs to be super strong. And, you know, there's a little bit of give in these ones right now because they're only tack welded in certain spots and that's about it same as these ones let me come over here and i'll show you guys right here see this one of the tack welds broke but that's kind of my point as i'm going through i want it to be super super strong that way i can walk on that when i do other parts so in order to do that i'm seam welding it getting that part done like it will be when it's all done that way I don't have to worry about it. I can put as much weight on that right now if, as I want and there's no problems now, there at all. We're gonna have to make a part two on this cause these suckers are taking a long time. So I'm gonna do what's left here off camera pretty much, there's not a lot to see. It's the exact same thing. Basically, I think it's like a nine, five eighths or maybe a 10 inch, whatever, straight cut cause we did the 45s on the truck side. No big deal. 
We still got this front one, basically gonna be identical. And then we got all the sides. So we're gonna save that for a part two. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one really, really soon. All right, see ya.